I'm in rural eastern Iowa, just outside the town of Oxford. And while this might not seem the most obvious location for a video about banking, in fact, it was places just like this in rural America and the upper Midwest that were at the heart of the banking crisis in the United States in the early part of the 1930s. So why don't we go on into town and I'll show you what I have in mind. This is Augusta Avenue in Oxford, Iowa. Today it's a town of about 750 people, but in 1930 there were 525 people registered here in the U.S. Census of that year. Like many small towns across the United States in the 1920s and 1930s, Oxford, Iowa had its own small state chartered bank. That bank was in this building that's just to my right here, which today is a photography studio. In the 1920s and 30s, it was state chartered banks, just like this one, in small towns across rural America that were at the center of the banking crisis. The issue with the local banks is that they were all independent. There was no branch banking in Iowa and most American states in the 1920s and the 1930s. These local banks made loans to farmers in the surrounding rural areas and to local businesses uh, here on Augusta Avenue. They also took deposits from local citizens in Oxford and in the surrounding farm country. And that was all fine and good as long as the agricultural economy was strong, which it was in the early part of the 20th century. But beginning in the 1920s, American agriculture across the board began to face a long-term protracted crisis. Global competi uh, competition and increased production put pressure on prices, depressing them. Likewise, American agricultural productivity increased, increasing production and further depressing prices. In response, local farmers, trying to keep their own heads above water, put more land into production. Some of them bought more land. They borrowed money to do it. Many of them uh, bought more equipment and borrowed money to do that as well. Uh, that helped them keep their own bottom line flat and their income consistent by producing more, but that action further depressed prices. The issue finally came to a head in the late 1920s when the farmers could no longer pay back their loans. And when the farmers couldn't pay back their loans to small town banks like this, these banks were in big trouble. Beginning in 1929 and 1930, there were waves of closures of small banks, just like the Oxford State Bank, across the United States. In fact, the Oxford State Bank closed in 1930 uh, when it was unable to meet the demands of its creditors. So while this story started in small towns like Oxford, it didn't stay there very long. Little banks like the Oxford State Bank had borrowed money from larger banks regional banks in regional centers like Cedar Rapids, Iowa or Davenport, Iowa. Uh, and when the small banks couldn't pay back their creditors in those towns, then those regional banks were in trouble. And likewise, of course, those regional banks had borrowed money from big city banks in places like St. Louis, Minneapolis, and Chicago. And so when the regional banks couldn't pay back the big banks, those big banks were in trouble as well. And so that's what happened in the early 1930s, is that the structural weaknesses of the, um, of the banking system in America and the agricultural uh, crisis in the 1920s came together uh, and began to work its way up the system through the small local banks to the regional banks and ultimately to the banks in the nation's financial centers. As the banks began to collapse, as they did in waves in 1930, 31, and 32, 33, governors across many American states declared bank holidays or emergency closures of the existing and remaining state banks uh, to prevent panics uh, taking them out of business altogether and to protect their overall banking systems. Ultimately, in uh, March of 1933, on the 3rd, the night before Franklin Roosevelt was inaugurated president, the governors of New York and Illinois declared their banks on holidays, effectively closing the nation's banking system and ultimately uh, the American economy itself ground to a halt, just as Franklin Roosevelt took office from Herbert Hoover. And so there we have a local story in a small town uh, in rural Iowa that's connected very closely to a much wider agricultural crisis and to a wider financial crisis, which was a key part of the Great Depression 
in the early 1930s. The Oxford State Bank in Oxford, Iowa, the banking crisis.